Today we're going to talk about the PSC XD steering gear in my 96 Dodge Ram 3500. I'm going to tell you what it was like to install it, a couple things to keep in mind, and what it's like to uh, live with it on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's go. Okay, well this video uh, is going to be one of the first reviews of the list of parts that I put into the front end of this truck. Um, I think that was the last video I put out uh, where I was talking about uh, all of the front end upgrades. Uh, in addition to the front end upgrades, this thing has um, received uh, a pretty serious overhaul. The truck still has a long way to go to be kind of done and nice, but if you guys have any questions about parts you see, just let me know and I will try to uh, make some videos about them. Anyways, today we will be talking about the PSC XD steering gear that I put on this truck. So when I got this truck, uh, the steering was absolutely terrible. Um, it was just amazing how much steering wheel input was required to get it to go straight down the road. It was like an old movie. It was just hilarious. Um, so I decided to jump in and uh, give this thing a real good solid once over. Lots of quality parts on the front end, as I mentioned in that last video. And uh, one of the big ones was the PSC XD steering gear. And I got the pump and lines from them as well, just to have the total package. Okay, so here it is right here. Um, this thing is super beefy. These trucks have a pretty common issue with death wobble and uh, I've heard a lot of stories of pumps wearing out. I know there's a lot of guys go to the redhead pump which I think might be a stock one that got rebuilt to be a little beefier. Correct me if I'm wrong, I might have that mixed up. But uh, there's also a brace that can go on to uh, secure it a little better against the frame. Um, this one is supposedly designed to do away with all those issues. You can see there's some oil dripping. I've been uh, dealing with a uh, high boost oil leak on this truck, but that'll be something I'm jumping into uh, pretty quick trying to get that sorted out. Anyways, uh, so this is the pump here and uh, it is super, super heavy and super beefy. Yeah, here's another look at it. Uh, this thing is uh, quite a beefy unit. There's the uh, part number and brand name on there. All right, so as I mentioned, I got the uh, pump and lines from PSC as well. I can't comment as to whether the stock lines would work on this pump or not. Um, I also, uh, the pump, um, when I put it in, it was kind of like the uh, inside round part that goes in the uh, sort of sheet metal case that holds the fluid and all that kind of stuff. Let's see if we can get a shot of it. There's the uh, power steering cap. So basically the pump that goes inside that case, um, I replaced and then uh, the outside sort of sheet metal case that this lid um, goes into, I uh, had to take that off the other pump. All right, now uh, I made a mistake when I was swapping the case over. There's a spot where one of the lines that goes from the actual uh, steering gear to the back of the pump goes in and um, the line has a fitting that goes into a threaded hole. And I didn't notice, but the, uh, the threaded hole that it goes into is actually a fitting itself. And that holds the metal, like the sheet metal case to the actual pump. And as I was trying to get that apart, I buggered it up. I had to go buy a new stock style pump just so I could get the case off of it. And uh, that was a huge mistake. So uh, definitely be careful when you're pulling it apart. It should come apart easy. If it seems like it's stuck in there, just it's probably because that uh, other fitting is holding the case to the pump. All right, now this truck has 37 inch tires on it, uh, which would make it a lot harder on steering, but they're actually only 11 and a half inches wide. Uh, I've done a video about these tires a while ago. I think these things are perfect for a dually because they're tall and narrow. So, I mean, this truck, you can see how much tire is sticking out the back um, or sticking out the sides. I mean, this thing is super wide. I can't even imagine a dually on uh, 13 and a half inch or uh, 12 inch wide tires would just be crazy. So my dad taught me at a very young age to uh, never turn the steering wheel unless the vehicle is moving, you know, if you can avoid it. So I'm gonna do this right now just to show you guys, but this is something that I would pretty much never do. It will show you though how effortlessly these things uh, turn. It's pretty amazing how much power the steering gear has. So 
so here's a view of it from inside the cab. I mean, it's just a piece of cake. Wheel turns just fine, no issues at all. All right, now the next point I'll make about how effortless it is. Um, Part of this is gonna be a bit of an issue that I've experienced with driving, and uh, some of it is to do with the fact that I actually don't have a steering stabilizer on this truck. When I got it, um, it was uh, completely screwed. I always just assumed that a new one would come with the lift kit and that. It was just uh, you know, rookie mistake, total oversight, and something that I'm gonna need to buy. But uh, I find though, as a result of this uh, steering setup um, being pretty beefy and no steering stabilizer, that at uh, highway speed, it is a little bit darty uh, on the road. Um, I would hope that that's going to get taken care of with a steering stabilizer and putting a little bit of uh, pressure on it, but uh, we will see. Uh, I find if I'm you know, going down the freeway and there's a little bit of a groove in the lanes from big rigs going through there, the truck has a bit of a tendency to want to wander around a little bit. Uh, it has just had an alignment and uh, everything should be good in that department, but that would be my only complaint with this setup is that uh, it's a little bit darty on the highway. It's The steering's just a bit too light when you're driving down the road and you really got to kind of flow with it and, you know, just tell your brain and your arm to just kind of, you know, constantly not be so rigid on the steering wheel, but just kind of let it uh, do its thing and just, you know, you have to focus on kind of making the truck go straight. All right, so now we'll get down to price. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this cost me $1,450. If you're down in the States or possibly somewhere else in the world, that number might change uh, for better or worse. Um, I had to pay duty, I think, to get it imported into the country. A lot of you guys are down in the States, so I imagine uh, you're probably looking at more like $1,000 USD, maybe something like that. Um, personally, I think it's a worthwhile upgrade. Uh, I don't have any regrets on it but I also don't have that much mileage on it. I'm maybe 20,000 kilometers, 25,000 I've put on this, which is nothing. And, um, you know, uh, it is a couple of years old, but uh, this truck has spent most of its life since I've had it torn down to uh, a frame and slowly being put back together again. So anyways, uh, that's about all I got for this one. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in that previous uh, video where I talk about 13 grand worth of front end upgrades. If you guys want to hear um, my thoughts on any of those things or anything else in this truck, just let me know. And uh, I'm probably going to be able to do a video on it pretty soon. Anyways, I'm going to hit the road and uh, go cruise around a little bit and try and get my high boost oil leak sorted out so i hope you guys uh, have a good day thanks for coming along please give me a thumbs up a subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos and check me out on tiktok at stocky bald man and uh, i will see you guys on the next one